Early one morning, the manager of the Scarlowy Railway came to see the engines in the shed. I have some good news for you, he said. The engines perked up. What news would that be, sir? asked Peter Sam. The Duke of Sordor is coming to visit next week. The engines were excited. It would be the first time His Grace had visited since Scarlowy and Renaeus's 100th birthday. I wonder why he's visiting now, Renaeus said. It has been a while since his last visit, Sir Handel commented. That's right, Scarlow said. It was just after you two came here. I suppose that's it, Renaeus said, but he wasn't entirely convinced. Well, I have a feeling we'll be busy getting things ready. Quite right, Peter Sam. I'm putting you in charge of helping with the preparations. Later that morning, Scarlow had broken down and Sir Handel had helped him back to Craven's Gate. James was waiting when the two little engines pulled in and he didn't look happy. Sorry I'm late, James. I had a bit of a breakdown. At least you're not too late. That means I've still got a chance of leaving here before that diesel arrives. What diesel? Sir Handel asked. He was supposed to leave after this special project was finished, but he hasn't. Hurry up, James finished, casting an impatient eye on his passengers. They were soon aboard and James quickly departed. As he pulled out, he spotted a familiar black shape approaching. Diesel shot a disparaging look at the two little engines as he approached. Did it really take the two of you to pull that short train? Skylowy broke down, Sir Handel explained. I see, replied Diesel. So you're unreliable rather than inefficient. Sir Handel scowled angrily. I'll have you know we don't need any diesels on this railway. Let it go, Skylowy advised quietly. Without another word, the two little engines puffed off to the sheds. If all diesels were like that, Sir Handel thought to himself, he was glad they didn't have any on their railway. Later that evening, the manager was talking to the foreman of the maintenance shop. I'm afraid it's no good, sir, the foreman said. Skarloey's boiler tubes have completely collapsed. He's going to have to have a complete rebuild of his boiler. Skarloey, I'll let the men in the workshop know that you'll be there tomorrow, the manager said. He turned to the other engines. Renes, I want you to take him and have a full inspection while you're there. We can't afford to have anything go wrong during His Grace's visit next week. All four engines couldn't help being worried. But sir, what about the preparations for His Grace's visit and the regular trains? I've arranged for another locomotive to come and help out. He should be arriving any moment now. Peter Sam and Sir Handel exchanged an excited look. There was only one other little engine they could think of. Surely it couldn't be Grandpuff? Sir Handel frowned as he heard the chugging of a diesel engine steadily growing louder in the evening air. Who are you? he demanded. The small orange diesel smiled pleasantly. I'm Rusty. And you're a diesel? Rusty blinked, slightly confused. Yes. Were you expecting somebody else? Not at all, chimed in Renaeus. Welcome to the railway. While the other engines welcomed Rusty, Sir Handel thought back to his earlier conversation with Diesel. He didn't like this at all. Winter had arrived overnight, covering Sodor with a white blanket of snow. Good morning, the manager said as he arrived. Peter Sam, there's a train of supplies to be taken up to the lake for His Grace's visit in a few days. Renaeus will be waiting with his passenger train at the lakeside station until you've gone past. Peter Sam knew that Renaeus would be about halfway there by now. He'd left about an hour ago with the first train of the day. I'd better get going then. And with that, he departed. Rusty glanced inquisitively at the manager. He was looking forward to seeing his new line. Sir Handel, I'd like you to show Rusty around the slate quarry. An angry frown crossed Sir Handel's face. Now he'd have to spend all day showing this diesel how things were done, and they were already down on locomotive. Come on, let's get going. With that, they headed off, leaving Skarloey snoozing in the shed. A couple of hours later, Skarloey was still dozing in the winter sun when a familiar whistle sounded out. He opened his eyes to see a familiar red locomotive backing down towards him. Renaeus gently buffered up to Skarloey, and the two engines headed off to the workshop. Both engines were surprised to see another locomotive in the workshop, and the stranger hooted pleasantly as they backed in. Renaeus quickly moved over onto the track next to Skarloey. Skarloey and Renaeus looked curiously at the other engine. His brown paint was new, but his eyes spoke of agent experience. Who are you? Skarloey asked. I'm Duke. Named after the Duke of Sodor? asked Renaeus. That's right. How long have you been here, Duke? Renaeus asked. They've been rebuilding me for about a month or so, and I'm almost ready to go. Yes, tipped in one of the workmen. All we've got to do is to give you a boiler pressure test and seal your cylinders and you'll be ready to go, Duke. Duke grinned. I feel like a new engine already, he said. 
Reneus grinned as realization dawned. Just as he'd suspected, there was another reason for his grace's upcoming visit. You must be Scarloe and Reneus, Duke continued. The workmen here have been telling me about you. I think we've heard of you too. Tell me, did you ever work with two engines called Stuart and Falcon? Duke chuckled. Yes, I know those two scamps. I hear they're called Peter Sam and Sir Handel these days. Told you about me, have they? They'll be surprised to see you, Scarloe commented. I'm sure they will. The three engines laughed. Over at the quarry, Sir Handel wasn't laughing. He backed down onto his train, bumping the trucks hard. He was about to leave when Rusty pulled alongside. That train looks heavy. Would you like me to take some of those? The little diesel offered helpfully. Sir Handel scowled. We steam engines are perfectly capable of handling trains on our own. He abruptly steamed off, leaving behind a very shocked and confused Rusty. Later that afternoon, Sir Handel was taking Reneus' usual supply train up to the quarry. The other engine had been kept in the workshop after his inspection. Sir Handel was still grumpy, and it didn't help that the trucks were being difficult. Come on, he growled at the trucks as they started climbing a hill. The trucks exchanged a mischievous look. It was their chance to get back at Sir Handel for bumping them. As the train reached the top of the hill, the coupling between the first two trucks gave way. All Sir Handel felt was a sharp jerk, then his train became easier to pull. The trucks quickly picked up speed, laughing as they hurtled along. Further down the track, Rusty's driver had just set the points for the main line. He jumped back as the runaway cars careened past. Jumping to his feet, he called out a warning. Rusty, look out! Rusty looked up, horrified, as the truck sped towards him. With an almighty crash, the truck slammed into him, hurling him backwards. Peter Sam had been waiting at the next station for Sir Handel to arrive, so that he could depart with his passenger train. Did you have some trouble with your trucks? Peter Sam asked. How did you guess? You seem to have left them behind. What do you mean? You've only got one. A horrifying realization struck Sir Handel a second later. They must have broken away from me on the hill. Both engines exchanged a worried look. You'd better head up to the quarry and turn around, Peter Sam said. I'll go and see what's happened. With that, the two engines quickly departed. A horrified look crossed Peter Sam's face as he reached the station at the bottom of the hill. Trucks were strewn across the tracks and platform, completely blocking the line. A familiar orange shape was sitting in the snow, sandwiched between a brake van and a goods truck. Rusty, are you all right? I think they bust my buffers, but aside from that, I'm fine. Have you sent for help? Peter Sam asked the station master. Yes, there's a breakdown train on the way. Sir Handel arrived a few moments later, looking just as horrified as Peter Sam. He was speechless. You really shouldn't let the trucks get to you like that, Peter Sam said. Sir Handel found his voice. You're starting to sound like Grandpa. Grandpa? Rusty asked. He was an engine we used to work with, Peter Sam explained. And we know exactly what he'd say about this mess. This would never suit his grace. Sir Handel and Peter Sam couldn't believe their eyes. A familiar brown shape was approaching them, pushing the breakdown train and pulling a coach loaded with workmen. Duke braked to a halt just short of the derailed trucks and cast his eyes over the scene before him. Still haven't got a handle on that temper, eh, Falcon? Well, I, uh, no, Sir Handel admitted, ashamed. He knew this was all his fault. Come on, he said. Let's clean this up. A couple of hours later, the crashed trucks had been cleared up and the four engines were sitting in the shed. Did you say that Reneus had to have his firebox rebuilt? Peter Sam was asking. Yes, Duke replied. So it's up to us to look after the line until he and Scarloe get back. Peter Sam and Sir Handel exchanged a look, both thinking the same thing. It was going to be just like the old days again. Sir Handel glanced over at Rusty. Once he'd been put back on the tracks, the little diesel had insisted on helping with the clean-up, despite the damage that he'd taken. I think I owe you an apology, Rusty. That's all right, Rusty replied. All four engines worked hard, and soon the big day arrived. There was still no sign of Scarlet or Reneus. I do hope Scarlet and Reneus get here in time to see his grace, Peter Sam said, worried. Patience, Stuart, Duke replied. I'm sure they'll be here in time. Before Peter Sam could reply, a whistle sounded out and Edward Chuffed passed with the train carrying his grace. A moment later, Scarloe and Reneus arrived from the workshop. I hope we're not too late, Scarloe said. Actually, I think you're just in time, Rusty replied. A few moments later, the Duke of Sodor arrived along with the manager. He went from engine to engine, exchanging a few words with each one, then stopped when he came to Duke. It must be Duke. I'm pleased to meet you at last, and I'm glad we found you. It's an honor to meet you too, sir, Duke replied. It's a fine railway here, Duke. I think you'll enjoy your new home, his grace finished. Once his grace had finished speaking to the engines, Scarlow left to take him on a tour of the line. Peter Sam and Sir Handel looked over at Duke. We're glad to have you here too, Grandpa, Peter Sam said. Duke couldn't help smiling. At last, he'd found a new home.